Hello everyone, TLSG here, back again with another daily Marvel Snap video. So today we have Sulky Hulky back again. We have six collector's reserves to unlock. Last week we did unlock a few, but we didn't pull any cards that felt like they were build around cards. Like they could be the only card we put into a pool three deck and that and be fine. And so we're going to pull a few more. We got Hellcow. That's a really good discard card, but I don't think it is our build around card. We get a pool, pretty cool variant, but I still hope that we get something else as our like primary build around card. Adam Warlock is, is a good one. That is a really good pool. But again, not what we want to use as a standalone building card. And then we grab Falcon. So between Falcon and Beast, we could figure out a way to do a version of like a, a Bounce Bros style deck list. But I think Falcon by himself is a little bit underwhelming. So let's take a look at our, our current cards from Pool 3 and see what we have. We have Falcon, Adam Warlock, we have Hellcow, Calling Wing, we have Hazmat. We do have Cerebro from Pool 3. And I think it might be pretty fun to do a build around for Cerebro. Maybe Cerebro 2 would be the most accessible without something like a Mystique or any other really high power cards. That's going to be our deck for this week. We're going to build around Cerebro. Give me just one second. We will hop over into the deck build and then we'll be right back. All right. And so we drafted a Pool 1 and Pool 2 only Cerebro deck list. Now, obviously, Cerebro is from Pool 3, but the rest of the cards in this list are from Pools 1 and Pools 2, respectively. And so I think this gives us a decent amount of disruption, a decent amount of flexibility, and then a decent amount of power push towards the end to try to finish off our opponent. And so know that there are several card upgrades that you can put in. So whenever you get Goose, that's going to be great at restricting the space that the opponent can play in. When you get Invisible Woman, that's going to be great for hiding your Cerebro, hiding your Blue Marvel behind, so that, the, so that it's protected from something like a, an Enchantress or a Rogue from stealing that ability. And then I think it goes without saying, once you unlock Mystique, that's like a next level high roll. You can do Cerebro into Mystique to amplify the effects drastically. But even without Mystique, I think this is absolutely playable and it has a sneaky level of power. Ooh, and one last card that you can add in is similar to Mr. Sinister. You can add in Brood. Brood from pool three is gonna be huge. It is a three cost card that fills up three slots. And so it's gonna be really flexible if you don't have a great power push, if you need a way to push a lot of your cards really quickly. So like a follow up to a storm location. Brood is gonna be perfect because it will add three two power cards into that lane, allowing you to push quite a bit of power there pretty quickly. But running through the cards that we do have in this current list. First up, we have Iceman. This is going to increase the cost of one of the opponent's cards. It will disrupt their curve just a little bit and make it a little bit easier for us to get an advantage out on the board. And it's two power, so all of our cards are going to be two power in this list to work with the Cerebro buff. Cerebro's ongoing effect is it's going to increase your highest power cards by plus two. And so if they are all two, three, four, five, all of those cards within that highest power level will get the will receive the bonus. And so Cerebro's pretty fragile, but what I have found is that it offers a a means to push a lot of power late and kind of surprise the opponent whenever your Cerebro and your Blue Marvel kind of pop off and you can sneak away a lot higher cube games rather than a deck that has been played a lot. Next up, we have Korg. Korg is going to shuffle a rock into your, your opponent's deck. If they draw this, this is a dead draw for them. So if you can drop this pretty early, sometimes you can stop them from drawing into some key resources by having them draw into the rock instead. And then we have Mantis. Mantis is going to steal one of the opponent's cards if we drop her in the same lane that the opponent dropped a card that turn. Now, since we don't have all of the really high power cards, what we're going to need to do is kind of do a hybrid. If you notice, we have some disruption with Iceman and Korg. We have some card steals with Mantis and Cable, a card destruction with Yondu. We want to try to hit some of their primary or key resources while still playing into our strategy at the same time. And so Mantis is going to do a decent job of that. We have Nightcrawler. He's going to be a cheap card that we can throw on the board, and he is flexible. He's movable. And so if there is a lane that we just need to sneak a little bit of extra power into, we have that opportunity and we can. And then we have Yondu. Yondu is going to remove the top card from your opponent's deck. It does give them some information. It gives us a little bit of information as well. If we hit a primary target, then that's great. Um, if not, 
At the very least, he is a two power card that can get buffed up by our Cerebro. And then we have Cable. Cable, most of the time, we are not going to utilize the card that we steal with Cable. What we can do with this information, though, is if we draw into their Onslaught, if we draw into their Hella, one of the really big high power combo plays, we can use that information and better assess what our position is and what our likelihood of winning will be. And then we have Mr. Sinister. Mr. Sinister is going to create a copy of himself. And so this is going to create two two power cards onto the board for a pretty cheap cost. A lot of this deck is really low energy curve so that we can flood the board on almost every single turn. Sometimes we can skip the first couple of turns to really flood the board late and kind of adjust our power exactly where we need it to be. Uh, Mr. Sinister is a great way to get two two power cards out onto the board for really cheap. And then we have Scorpion. Scorpion is going to be good in mirror matches. So if the opponent is running a Cerebro, because it is so fragile, if you drop a Scorpion and, and it inflicts their cards with negative one, those cards are no longer benefited from the Cerebro bonus. And even if they're not running a Cerebro, you get some upside from dropping him on the board, depending on how many cards you can hit in your opponent's hand. And then we have the main build around. We have Cerebro. Cerebro is going to enable you to do some weird power pushes that are a little bit hard to calculate. If your opponent is a little bit newer to the game, they may not have seen very many Cerebro deck lists, and it can take you by surprise if you're not looking for it and not ready for it. And so Cerebro can help us push some some power into lockdown lanes, whether it be Storm, or maybe the maybe the opponent used a Professor X and they think they have the lockdown or the win, and then we drop Cerebro and push some, some sneaky power in that direction. Cerebro is going to be very hit and miss. You have to retreat whenever you don't have a win condition. But whenever you do win, a lot of times you can sneak four and eight cube games out of it. And then we have Mr. Fantastic. He's going to be a two power card, but he's also going to impact his, ad his adjacent lanes with an additional plus two. And so this is a good way for us to push some power out onto the board when otherwise we'd be really restricted in how many cards and what we can drop in each location. And then we have Storm. Storm is going to be pivotal in making sure we win one of the lanes in helping us guarantee that we win one of the lanes. We have a really big advantage if we can drop Storm and then a couple of other cards in that lane by being able to push power into that into that lane later. And if we drop a Nightcrawler into that same lane, we can always move it out if we have too much power and we need a little bit of a power push somewhere else. And then finally, rounding out the deck list, we have Blue Marvel. Blue Marvel has the ongoing, your other cards have plus one power. Since he is three power, he's going to push all of our other cards, all of our two power cards up to three, allowing all of them, including Blue Marvel, to get hit with the Cerebro buff, allowing a pretty good late game power push that, again, is kind of hard to anticipate and can take your opponent by surprise more often than not. But that is the rundown of the deck list. We are going to go ahead and jump into a couple of games. I hope you guys enjoy. All right, so first up we have Cheetah Met Metsy? Cheetah Messi? I don't know. We do get a pretty good advantage with the big house because four, five, and six cost cards can't be played there. We don't have very many four, five, or six cost cards. Actually, the only thing we can fit into that lane would be our blue Marvel. So the inverse, the Crimson Cosmos, would be kind of our one of our really bad locations. Um, same thing with Muir Island. Muir Island is definitely not great for us. We don't want to drop anything in there because it will gain power over time, which will ruin the power push that our other lanes can receive. And so what I'm going to do instead is we're going to play Mr. Sinister next turn. We're going to drop Storm. We can shift that location away from Muir Island. That way it's not going to continually trigger that bonus. And then we can drop something like a Mr. Fantastic and something else um, to go along with it. Oh, actually, I mean, I mean... So they hit us with the Scorpion, which does feel bad. That makes our Storm unable to be buffed up by Cerebro, but, and, and the last location is Central Park, which caps out the big house for us. But the upside that we have is that we can actually wait on changing Moir Island by one turn. That will buff up our Squirrel and our Mr. Fantastic to a point that they will be two power and they can be impacted and buffed up by our Cerebro. And so I think that's probably our best case scenario here. Let's go ahead and do a Yondu first. Next turn, we'll do our Korg. Um, this is going to change this location away from Weir Island. They will probably push more resources there. Um, but we're really going for a win in the big house in probably Central Park. But we want a contender and we want to be contending against their power in the flooded lane as well. So we destroy their, their Hell Cow, which is a really big late game power push. 
They use a rock slide and shuffle quite a few rocks into our deck. Um, unfortunately, we do immediately draw one, um, which is which is not what you want to see. So let's go with the Cerebro. We're going to do Korg into the flooded location. That will buff all of these three up by two. And then if we can draw into Blue Marvel, that's a fantastic late game power push. Most likely we won't, though. The Killmonger is huge. Uh, the Killmonger clears a lot of their lane. It clears a lot of ours, unfortunately. And so with the Killmonger, we don't win the flooded lane without Blue Marvel. No way. That is the best case scenario. Do we want one extra power in Central Park or one extra power in the big house? I think we put it in the big house. Let's go ahead and snap against them. This may be a bot. Mind you, this may be a bot. It looks kind of bot-like, but it's been a little while since we've been on Sulky Hulky. I don't know how many real people we'll match against. And this is a this is a pretty decent play line. We're able to show the functionality of the deck anyways. Um, I'll make sure that they're not all bot matches, but this one feels like, oh yeah, with just a last turn Iron Man, um, after a snap, it feels very bot-like. But it does show the power potential of the deck list. Let's go ahead and get a few human matches. But it's not a bad way to showcase the deck first off. All right, so next up we have Pax. In our starting hand, we have a couple of our low-cost cards. But if they start realizing that we are running a Cerebro 2 before turn 3, they can actually ruin our combo by sending us something in Oscorp. But I think we just play our cable. We, we play the cards that we have. We wait until turn three before we really start diving in. And it'd be really hard to understand, or it'd be really hard to know that we were running a Cerebro 2 before that point. Ooh, we can actually do a Wong into a quadruple Korg. I kind of like it. Um, let's go with a Mr. Fantastic. <laughs> let's go with the Mr. Fantastic. That's going to push some power to the left and the right. And then I do think we're going to go with the Wong on four into a potential quadruple Korg. We could do Yondu, we could do Mantis. Um, we could get quite a bit of upside from that interaction. And so they actually storm the far left lane. We're going to be able to push our Mr. Sinister and Nightcrawler over there. Or let's do Mr. Sinister, let's do Scorpion. And we can go go ahead and throw Korg into Kamartage. That's going to trigger four rocks to shuffle into their deck. Um, which should really disrupt what they're able to draw for the rest of the game. Okay, and so they drop one card in Kamartage after dropping the Flooded location, which is interesting. Um, they did have the Wong in their deck. That's what we stole with Cable. And so we know that they have a lot of ongoing abilities. We will see what they end up having. Um, so the double white tiger is pretty big. If they have an Odin as well, that will do it four times. Oof. They did end up retreating. I, I don't know. They, I feel like they had a pretty good shot if they had their Odin. Maybe they didn't draw an Odin. Maybe they drew into one of the one of the mini rocks we shuffled in their list. If they had an Odin, they would have been able to push wide, and I think they would have stayed. But they ended up retreating, and so I think our Cerebro and Nightcrawler would have been enough to swing the location and swing the win in our favor. All right, so I'm trying not to be too excited here. It has been at least six games since I've seen a, a human player. And so next up, we have Mustang Ross. And hopefully we have a good, clean match that we win or lose very, very closely. Let's go ahead and play the Yondu because we don't know if they have a three or a one cost card or if they are even going to play it. And so they don't. They're probably waiting out to see what this Bifrost location is. So since our so we went with the Yondu because that doesn't take a specific trigger. Now we can go with Cable for turn two. And let's go ahead and stack our Cable into the Bifrost. Once we get a better idea of where they're going to be pushing cards, maybe at that point we play our Mantis to be able to pull into some of their cards. So we pulled into their Blade. I didn't pay attention to what our Yondu discarded, but I assume it was decent. Uh, <laughs> I, assume it, I assume it was at least decent. And so all of our cards are actually going to get pushed over to the left one. And so we need to be aware of that, and especially with Start Tower, giving a plus two bonus on turn five, we need to kind of play around that. We can use that as a way to get our Cerebro up to Cerebro 2. That way he gets the it. That way it gets the bonus from himself, it, themselves, itself. That way it gets the bonus from its ongoing ability. But otherwise, we really don't want to play any cards into the Stark Tower lane. Let's go ahead and play our Cerebro into Hellfire Club. We can go ahead and play a Nightcrawler into the Bifrost. That way we can move him out. We still have kind of play around potential. And... We're going to shift our Cerebro over into Stark Tower. That way he'll be a Cerebro. It will be a Cerebro too. And from there, we can start stacking into the Bifrost. After turn five, we can 
flood our cards into Stark Tower. Um, it just really depends on what they end up playing. So we could change this location with Storm, but I think it's a little bit too little too late. I do want to drop our Mantis over there because I think that's where they will drop their card, but we can't. Alas, alas, we cannot. So the highest power thing that we can get or the highest cost is a blue Marvel. So we can at least hold one of our one cost cards that, we can, we, that way we can support our Cerebro over here. Um, and so we turn the Bifrost into the flooded location. It doesn't matter because it's turn five. We just have to hope, that, ooh, we get two turns now. We get an additional turn to draw into our card because they extended the game with magic. Very interesting. I don't know what they're running behind Invisible Woman any, anymore. I thought I did, but now I don't. <laughs> so let's play with the Scorpion into Stark Tower. We will play Iceman over into the Flooded Lane. Uh, we're going to hold the Blade. We're not going to play Blade at all. And so that will discount their cards in their hand or... Uh, it will reduce the power of the cards in their hand. Ooh, that Giganto is huge. What a massive Giganto. Then they discard their black cat, and now they draw into their last card, which has to be their Hella. Hella, hella bad. Let's let's play it out. Let's see, let's see how it goes. We have a pretty good power push, although he is going to be able to resummon quite a few cards. Let's play, our, let's play our Blue Marvel. It doesn't matter where we play it, honestly. We can play our Blue Marvel. That's going to buff up all of our cards across the board. And it's going to become a 5 power card as well. Uh, because it will get this Cerebro buff also. And so we anticipate the Hella here. That is all that they have left in their deck. Between uh, between our Cable, uh, the Yondu. Oh, yeah. Yep. There is the Swordmaster, which discards a card. There is the Death. There is the Black Cat. That is all that they had discarded. Interesting. With our Blue Marvel, we're able to overcome their power in the left. We're over, able to overcome their power in Limbo because we had a really big Limbo lane. Um, not quite in Stark Tower, but honestly, that's fine. Uh, Mustang Ross, thank you so much for being not a bot and very, very good game. Let's go ahead and jump into the next one. See if we can match up against a human player again. You guys, when I tell you that it has been so long since I have seen a human. It's been a long time. So out of about 25 games, I counted them. Out of about 25 games, we have seen three, now four humans. Oh my gosh, this has been the wildest ride. Hopefully we can get a good match. Hopefully we can win. Would he be even better? We either I hope we either win or lose very, very closely. That is the idea. Um, but if you are watching this video and you do enjoy the content, but you're not subscribed, we are currently at 3,638 subscribers as of the time of recording this episode. So if you are enjoying the content, please consider subscribing. It helps the channel grow and reach a wider audience. And we are so very close to our next major channel milestone of 4,000 subscribers. And so they snapped off of something. Um, I'm not entirely sure what they snapped off of. I think we go ahead and storm the super flow. They may send us a, a a green goblin here, but I think we can work with that. Um, so let's storm this location. I bet this is a green goblin in the super flow. That would make the most sense as to why they were so excited. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's our little goblin buddy, um, which is which is fine. We get a card from the hub. Most likely, we can we can actually use that one. Interesting. So we can do a Mister Sinister here. That will push two cards here. We can do a. A Misty Knight here. Next turn, we can do a Mantis somewhere. If we can draw into our Cerebro, we'll get an even better upside. Ooh, he changes the Flooded location from Flooded to Atlantis. Interesting. So he's going to have an extra two, three turns to play there. Kind of scary. So let's see. Where do we think they drop cards? I'm going to drop our Cable into mid. I think they probably play something into the hub, maybe. Oh my gosh. And the Scarlet Witch was created by the hub. Huge. So they could have they could have a like a warpath if they use warpath here, that makes this lane really hard to lock down and win. Um, yeah, let's gonna we're gonna mm, yeah, <laughs> we're gonna gamble on that. Oh, no, they play into Atlantis, unfortunately, which caps out. Oh no, it caps us out. Ooh, that's awful. <laughs> um, so they're running a debris junk deck potentially because we with our cable we stole a viper. Very interesting. 
we know that they can't send us a card here. They could do a Hobgoblin next turn, but we're just hoping that they don't, that they have mercy on us. They do have to play here this turn. So a Doc Ock play would be pretty big if they're running the version of a like a Debris Junk deck that runs a Doc Ock. I'm just kind of surprised at the armor play. Okay, so they send us a Black Widow, which is fine. And then a Cosmo. So we're actually going to be able to win this lane. Maybe even this lane. Interesting. Igno. Igno? I don't think I said his name. Next up, we have Igno. And we're just so excited that we're up against a human. That win or lose, I think we're going to show this game. So with Blue Marvel, that's going to push us up four here. That pushes us up to seven. It pushes us up into the lead here and pushes us and extends our lead by six here. So pushes us up, pushes us up to 10. So let's go ahead and snap back on them. Let's go ahead and lock this in. I think we're fairly confident. I think <laughs> they can't enchantress to counter our blue Marvel. Maybe they have a blue Marvel of their own. Ooh, a spider woman is, is an interesting one, but that's not going to be good enough um, because we're going to win the far left in the middle location. Not quite going to be good enough, Igno. I appreciate you being a human player. I, I really do. I, <laughs> I really, really mean that. So with that win, let's go ahead and jump into, I fret to say it, but let's jump into maybe one more. If it takes as long to find another human as it did this one, we're going to leave it at five games, but let's go ahead and search for another one real quick. All right. So next up we have Rafi. Uh, Rafi? We're going to go ahead and start with a... We're going to start with a Yondu, then we're going to go Cable, and then turn three, we will shuffle a Corgan. What we don't want to have happen, or what we don't want to do, is drop a Yondu and end up destroying the rock that we shuffle, drop a Cable and destroy the rock that we shuffled in. Um, and so we're going to go ahead and go with a double Cable now. Sinister London's pretty decent for us. Um, we're going to take two more of the cards. Next turn, we can shuffle two rocks into their deck to disrupt their flow quite a bit. If they don't have their major resources in hand, um, that's going to be beautiful. So we pulled their Patriot. That is their big power push. Now, they might have a Blue Marvel. They might also have a, a Kazar. But we pulled their Patriot, which is one of their biggest power pushes. And they don't, they don't necessarily know that we have it. So what we want to do is kind of play it slow, play it cool. Uh, we don't want to let them know what we have. And so we're going to play our Scorpion. We're going to we're not going to play Patriot just yet. We're not going to snap. We're going to wait. Um, we want to give it a little bit of time before we snap so that they don't think that we pulled their major resource. Well, a Wong? A Wong in a Patriot list? That feels kind of Wong. Oh my gosh, that's that's not our best. That's not our best joke. We can go double Mr. Sinister or we can go Mr. Sinister. We don't necessarily want to use any of these these four. Um, cause this would break our cere our potential Cerebro. If we don't draw on Cerebro, then I, uh, I mean, at that point we can just throw them onto the board, but I think we go with Mr. Sinister for now. Next turn, these cards will move into one of these two lanes. So we'll probably want to play blue Marvel here to copy it next turn. I'm really curious what they're wanting to push with Wong. Um, I just, I don't, I don't know what that could be. Now we could do a double Cerebro here. We could do a double Cerebro. Next turn, we could just do a single blue Marvel. So that's going to give us a better power, a better overall power push. And so I think that's what we go with. Again, we don't necessarily want to play any of these cards. We don't really get any upside out of them. Um, they've been inverted by the peak. None of them would would help our cause that much. Uh, Korg would shuffle in two rocks into their deck. But um, at this point, they only have one more card to draw anyways. And so I don't, I don't think it's going to be as impactful as it would have been otherwise. So we, we, so we go with the double Cerebro that will buff up all of our two cost cards quite a bit. Ooh, they go with, oh my God, I'm so confused. They go with the Dr. Doom and then I'm guessing they were hoping that it bumped over into the Wong lane. Um, so it would go with another Dr. Doom or a, a double Dr. Doom at that, but, but it, but it didn't, <laughs> I don't know. Um, so let's go with the blue Marvel. That's going to push our power here and here. So if, uh, if they have a really big power push here, they might, they might be able to take it. Um, at this point, I don't think, I don't know if we've snapped or if they've snapped, but I don't think we snap back. Yeah, nope, nope, we were the ones that snapped. Okay, I, I changed my mind. I was going to be the one that snapped. So let's play the blue Marvel. If they have an Enchantress, that feels really bad. Otherwise, I think we, I think we might have this because four power is going to push us up to 22. If they have a nine power play, that's only 21. Uh, okay, um, so they do end up, up retreating. Luckily, 
I guess even so had their had their Dr. Doom pushed over here, it would have done another couple of Doom bots and then this one would have been capped out as well. And we would have been able to come up over their power in both lanes anyways. And so I don't think even in the ideal scenario with that play, they were going to get it. Had they had their Patriot? Oh, they realized that we drew their Patriot. That's why they retreated. Um, so our cable came in absolutely critical. Otherwise, we probably would have lost to the Patriot, buffing up all of these Doom bots. But that took so long. Um, the overall versus humans, I was about five and one, but we had to play about 30 five or more games to get there because we were facing so many bots. So I, I am going to go ahead and end the video at five games this week. I'm sorry. I know that it usually goes one or two games longer. I, I can't hold out anymore. We're going to go ahead and end the video. I hope that you guys enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to leave it a like and a comment down below. And as always, this has been TLSG. Later, guys.